Saint Basil, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because of my sins, I seem to be unsuccessful in everything that I do. Have you ever thought of those words? There's a great truth in them, which is to say that our sins do impede every day the success of what we undertake. And yet at the same time, one must also say that very often we are unsuccessful in what we set out to do so that we can be successful in the great work of life salvation by carrying out God's will, which is not always identical with our own will. The difficulty with actually spending too much time on the thought, I'm unsuccessful in everything I try to do, is that we might end up giving way to self-pity, and self-pity is a form of pride, and of course, that's a sin. I think of this because St. Basil said these words, today's saint, he thought of himself as unsuccessful in everything he tried to do, and yet the church holds him up as a great one of the few saints throughout history, our own patroness is another one, who merited the title of the great, because he was so great in what he set out to do. Whether it be he lived in the fourth century during the great Arian heresy crisis, whether it be in confronting an emperor to uh, vindicate the rights of the church for liberty to teach the truth, once the Emperor of Allen sent the chief of police to see him and threatened St. Basil with um, persecution, exile, or death even, unless he went along with the program of uh, the government concerning the modification of church teaching. Some things never really changed too much throughout history. Well, he told him, when it comes to exile, it doesn't matter to me, I'm already in exile from my true home, which is heaven. And when it comes to suffering or even death, my stomach is hurting me so much right now, he said, if you put me to death, you'd be doing me a favor, because then I would go to the place of perfect joy, which is heaven. And the chief of police went back to the emperor and he said, I've never met anyone like that before. He told that as first of all to St. Basil, and St. Basil said, well, you've probably never met a bishop before. He was able then to do so much to defend the true faith, even though that entailed sometimes pushing reluctant priests or bishops to do their duty, long, patient negotiations about theology throughout the whole church, or ceaseless teaching and the resisting of pressure. He was is responsible, really, for the foundation of religious life, all of the different communities of contemplative or active religious throughout the whole church, as a young man, he studied the Eastern monks of St. Anthony, and he wrote two rules, the lesser and the minor, that influenced the church very much, even though he himself, because of a crisis in the church, could only be a monk for about five years. And after that, he was thrown into, into, into very great activity. And last of all, he was a, a saint who put his Catholic faith into practice. He built up a whole complex of churches, orphanages, and hospitals, known as the Basiliad, after him, and he administered them all, and very often personally took care of the sick or the poor. And he did all of this before he died in his, I believe, his 49th year. St. Basil came from a big family. He was born just at the end of the persecutions in what is today um, eastern Turkey. Uh, ten children. His father was a, a wealthy lawyer that died when he was very young. And his uh, maternal grandfather was a martyr for the Holy Faith. Um, his mother was a saint, as were his grandparents. And he fell under the influence of his older sister, St. Macrina. And she is the one that impelled him towards the religious life and the consecration of his life to God and to Almighty God's glory. A wonderful saint, St. Basil. From his perspective, he was always unsuccessful. He couldn't see that big picture, which the church sees today. When she holds up his picture or his feast day, she says, Behold, truly a great saint who did great things for Almighty God. Let us ask St. Basil to give us the grace not to, not to spend too much time on worrying whether or not we're successful, but to spend a lot of time of worrying as to whether or not we are doing God's will 
today at this very moment. Now we can conclude with a prayer that St. Basil himself wrote. St. Basil had a great influence on the Eastern liturgy. O Christ, our Lord and God, creator and king of all the world, I give thee thanks for all the benefits which thou hast bestowed upon me, and most of all for the gifts of thy holy and quickening mysteries which I have this day received. I pray thee, O loving and merciful one, keep, shelter, and defend me under the shadow of thy wings, and grant me in a pure conscience unto my last breath to partake of thy sacrament for the remission of sin and everlasting life. For thou art the bread of life, the fount of holiness, the giver of all good things, and to thee with the Father and the Holy Ghost we ascribe glory now and forevermore. Amen. St. Basil the Great, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen.